Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another upgrade video. This time one of our viewers sent us this little totem rainmaker. And I have to tell you, I've got mixed feelings about this little speaker. There's some good and there's some bad. And so let's just dive in and start talking about it. First with the cabinet. Um, it's, it's not a very heavy cabinet, but it's fairly well made. It's got one brace that runs through it here, and I don't know if you can tell or not, but there is a brace that has, it has six smaller holes drilled through it to let air flow, and I think there's actually a problem with that. Uh, the port on it is tiny. It's a little bitty port, and uh, I'll get back to that. That was a problem. The drivers, though, um... The, the little woofer is made by a company we've been doing business with since about 1996. And that was called Peerless of India. And they make a nice woofer. They make our woofers, uh, quite a few of our woofers. Our M130 is the same frame as this woofer. The dust cap's different. The profile of the cone is a little different. but And the voice coil winding is very different. But overall, it has a lot of similarities. And one of the good things about this this driver and a lot of it has to do with the cone material is that it dissipates stored energy very well it's very well damped now at the very top of its range pretty high up there's a little more break up in this one than what we see in ours there's there's quite a bit of a little peak up there but it's pretty high up in frequency so it's no problem a simple second order created a pretty smooth roll off uh, the tweeter is a metal dome tweeter and it says made in Norway on there. And it and there's an airspace in the back here. I'm surprised it isn't filled with some type of damping material, but there is a little bit of damping material right in the, the pole piece itself through the vent. So that's what we got going on there. Now the crossover parts. Hmm. It's got this big binding post cup on the back and dual binding posts. And yes, the ends are stuck. Steel. So, um, but they did put some good quality parts on the tweeter. They've got a clarity cap here, a poly cap on the tweeter, which is a pretty good cap. They've got some small uh, wire wound resistors there, which they're not saying cast resistors. Uh, they are going through a little metering block, though, that does have some steel screws on it. And the ends of the, actually, the ends of the resistors are steel, too. So, on that. They do have an air core inductor on the tweeter in the uh, dental floss gauge variety. And again, it's connected with some more pieces that are steel. And then in the woofer circuit, you can see there's a big steel iron core running through it. And there's a bundle of three different types of capacitors on this. I do like that it's point to point wired. There's no circuit board. But again, there's there's good and bad here. It's like you put a good quality cap on there and then you shot yourself in the foot with some of these connectors that have still pieces on them. So like I said, good and bad. But now let's get into more some good and bad here. Let's look at the factory measurements on this thing. Let's throw it up there. This, this is the on-axis on -axis frequency response. Yes. The tweeter is really hot. There is a 5 dB rise in the tweeter's response that is really 5 dB louder than the rest of the rest of the speaker. And it covers a pretty wide range up top there. So if you're sensitive to brightness, if you're sensitive to metal cone tweeters and all that stuff, this might not be your speaker because it's definitely voiced pretty hot. Uh, if we look at the horizontal off-axis, it drops off fairly evenly. And the vertical off-axis looks really, really good. Uh, the phase relationship of the drivers look great. Uh, impedance, there's no issue there with the impedance. The tuning frequency is pretty low for this type of box. Uh, I don't even know if I can read it here on this print-off because it kind of smeared it here. But it is tuned fairly low. I want to say 43 hertz is the tuning frequency of this little port. A lot of that reason is because it's small diameter, but it's really long. It goes to way out here, and it's got a slanted cut on the other side of it. 
Um, it is a four ohm speaker. It does dip to 3.7 ohms. So you got to keep that in mind. Now here's the cool part. The spectral decay on this stuff is pretty clean. Even despite the fact that this one came in, I don't know if it went out from the factory this way, but it came in with nothing on the inside. No insulation, no damping at all. So as you can see in the, in the woofer's response, the decay immediately dies and then it's flat. And then here comes something at the bottom there out of the blue. Uh, even when I brought the levels up, you could see it a lot more clearly that there was some internal reflections going on inside the box. But the woofer dissipated its energy pretty quickly and so did the tweeter, so super clean. At the same time, I had another speaker come in from an, a different company. I'm not gonna say the name. But by comparison, I'm gonna throw up the spectral decay of that speaker and you can get an idea just how big a difference there is in spectral decay. You can see there is a long ringing trail that is horrendous. That is about as bad as I've seen in a long time. That is completely and totally an unusable woofer. That is hitting it with a pulse and then it just continues to just keep on ringing like a bell. This woofer, much like some of our own woofers that we get from the same company, immediately dissipates that stored energy and it's very clean. So it has a potential of having a great mid-range response and being very clear through that whole region. Now, to fix this stuff, oh my goodness. Some of the stuff I could fix. The, the port issue, I could not fix. It is way too small of a port. This is the port we send out with our Bravo kit using the same size woofer. And as you can see, the size of the port is considerably different. When we ran a 20 hertz sine wave through this thing, and a 30 hertz sine wave, and a 40 hertz sine wave, whoo, buddy, hang on, because it was making some noise. I mean, big time port noise out of this thing. So if you're playing at a lower level, not that big a deal. But if you're putting any kind of juice on it, you're making this woofer do some movement, yeah, hang on, there's going to be some noise there. You might be able to add a little bit of damping material in there, a little bit of polyfill or insulation into that port, slow that airflow down a little bit and minimize some of that chuffing noise. So that's a part I couldn't fix. Now the tweeter level I fixed. I brought it down to where it's within a dB of being flat. I left it there just a little and one of the reasons I did that was in order to completely flatten it out, in order to bring the top, that crown out of it and keep it flat, it required a lot of parts. And I flattened it out at one point and looked at it and thought, man, that's just crazy to put that many parts on that tweeter to flatten out that response. And I went back to a simple third order filter and it was a reasonable roll off and the drivers were in phase. And I decided that's gonna be it. I could bring the overall level down a little bit more, but then it starts creating a trough and kind of a hole there at the crossover region. So. It was a little give and take, and I played some tricks on it here and added um, some things to this filter to help balance it out a little bit, and I shuffled the resistance at the front versus at the end to try and tilt it a little bit and got it as smooth as possible without stacking a lot of parts on there. But overall, it's smooth now compared to where it was. It was unusable. The other thing, too, is... If you look at this response, 10 degrees off axis, you'll see that it's pretty flat. And when I looked at the 10 degrees off axis, that kind of confirmed for me that I wanted to go ahead and leave that tweeter where it was. And it's real smooth at that, at that, uh, at that off axis measurement. So it's not a speaker you'd want to just aim right at your head. It may be a little bit hot when you do that, but if you turn it out 10 degrees off axis, it's pretty flat and should be pretty good to listen to. Horizontal off axis looks okay. We've got a little bit of a bump there between three and 4,000. Not too bad. Vertical off axis looks pretty good still as well. Got a little bit of a dip there as you move extreme vertical off axis. But overall, not bad. The impedance overall is a little smoother. And when I did measure it, I did put some insulation in the box behind the woofer. That means I put insulation in this part of the box. But as you can see in the spectral decay, it's, it's still really clean, but at the... Over at the end where you see the woofer, you see it completely drop, and then you see it pop back up again. It's exactly like it was before. A lot of that 
could be a cavity resonance going on up here that's it's those wavelengths are getting up there coming back through and it's re-exciting the woofer so if you actually go through the tweeter hole and put a bunch of insulation in that upper section it should knock the rest of that out of it and smooth it out quite a bit because it was an internal reflection so what did all this come to and what with all the, everything that i did and i i'm going to throw this out there with some options i want to use just some basic good quality poly caps from jb cap with bypass caps so it's going to be a little higher quality than the clarity cap by itself just due to the fact that we're using the bypass cap but it's very similar and and then we're using all the air core inductors and good quality resistors that are not ferromagnetic and we're going to throw in a set of tube connectors to fix this issue with the binding post because these things have steel nuts on them and stuff and that's just that's just bad um and then new wiring some um heat shrink and some solder and everything you need to put this thing together you can mount the crossover on a small board and mount it in the bottom of the box no problem at all total came to 225 dollars for everything if you want to go in and step the capacitors in the tweeter circuit up to some sonic caps you could definitely bring the detail levels and resolution levels up a lot um, but i wanted to throw out a base level kit because i know this is a real budget level speaker give you guys an option of a cheap upgrade and then how far can I take it and it's gonna be another $255 to use all sonic caps in the tweeter circuit I could even throw in um, half a sheet of no res for half the price of a sheet of no res and you can line some of this lower section with a little no res and they may that may help a little bit as well um, port wise though you guys are kind of stuck with this thing unless you unless you go in with a cutting tool and you centered on that and you cut that thing out, you could slam a bigger port in there and do away with that chuffing problem. But I get the feeling in a lot of applications, you guys are not gonna be driving this little speaker that hard. So the port noise may not be that bad, especially if it's at the back. Although if you play it low and you play it very hard, it is very excessive. So just keep that in mind on this little thing. It does take a speaker that's relatively pretty good in some ways with problems and it solves the problems and it makes it really good across the board so i think it's it's a fun little upgrade it's easy to implement i think you guys will have some fun with it for all you guys who own some totem rainmakers that want to take things up a notch this will be online for you to click on and order uh, using any credit card or paypal or whatever you want to do so that's it for this little uh, upgrade video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section below. And also, if you haven't subscribed, I appreciate you subscribing to our channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.